Once again, welcome back to my channel, where in this third part of the Bard class series, I will be showing you what it looks like to level a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition Bard class character within Fantasy Grounds. As I have already covered what a Bard is, as well as created an initial character in the previous videos, I will jump directly into leveling this character through the various levels, hopefully getting as many done in as few videos as possible. So let's get started. In preparation for level 2, we're going to want to take a look at the Jack of All Trades and Song of Rest features once we acquire them at level 2. This character does not gain any additional proficiency bonus, does not gain any increase in cantrips, but will gain an increase in the known spells. So let's actually apply this particular level. And all I'm doing is left clicking on this class sheet dragging the icon character down and dropping it right over top of where the class is. And that is now applied at that particular level to this character. The next thing that I want to do is actually take a look at the abilities that we gained. So I'm going to pop these open and just set them aside for the moment. And let's leave them there. Before I do anything though, I want to actually go through and make sure that I take care of the spells requirement here. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, open up the spell casting window here, and pop open the actual list of spells. And I'm just going to scroll this back up. Now, we will not gain access to a second level spell until we hit third level. So in this particular case, when we increase our spells known, we can either choose not to add another spell to our list and wait until we gain access to these second level spells, or we can just go ahead and select another level 1 spell and add it to our actions tab. And I'm just going to take care of adding Featherfall to this. Interesting that that has done that. That's a first to me. I understand what happened in this particular case. When this character was created by the character wizard, it created a group called Spells, and then in brackets, Bard. And then the various levels of those spells have been added to that group. And that's why we see this this way. When I drag and drop a spell from here onto here, that group doesn't already exist. So it's throwing it into this particular section here as a brand new group. It's entirely up to you whether you want to go ahead and change it for now. I don't think it really much matters, to be honest. But in any event, that's taking care of the actual spells spells that we're going to be dealing with. I'm just going to move this up here so that I have a little bit more room to take a look at these two things. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look at Jack of All Trades. In relation to the Jack of All Trades feature, it is one that can be very confusing right from the outset. And the reason being is that you are essentially gaining half of your proficiency bonus in all of the available skills that you don't already have a proficiency bonus in. And what this means is that you are literally able to set this up as half proficiency bonus for all of the skills that you have no proficiency bonus in. And all you do is click this three times, one, two, three, and you'll set it up as a half proficiency bonus. And that is literally all you have to do. Now, granted, there are quite a few uh, skills here, so it does take a moment for you to go through and do this all. Uh, oops, I, and if you uh, actually miss a few times, <laughs> it'll take a little longer. So that takes care of the adjustment that needs to be made for Jack of All Trades. It kind of feels a little bit cheaty, but when you think about it, in order for a bird to be able to create the song, paint a particular object appropriately, uh, write the story in as much detail as they wish. They have to be able to understand the concepts that they're writing about just a little bit to make sure that it, there's a little bit of a grain of truth there to be able to sell that particular story. Well, the only way to do that is to sort of half understand the various topics that you'll be discussing or trying to portray or explain. By having half proficiency in all of those skills, you were kind of giving yourself that ability to be able to do that. Now, you're only getting a half proficiency bonus here. You're not getting a whole proficiency bonus. So all you're really getting here is a plus one bonus to your scores at this particular point in time. And don't forget, this character has 
literally above average stats. So everything is gaining a bonus of some sort. But that covers everything we need to deal with when it comes to Jack of All Trades. So let's set that aside for now and take a look at Song of Rest. So Song of Rest gives you the ability to sort of soothe your party members a little bit, allow them to relax, and if those particular characters need or decide to roll any hit die to regain hit points, you're sort of giving them a little bit of a bonus to it by allowing them to roll an extra 1d6 initially as part of that particular process. Now, for the most part, this will occur during a short rest. It won't really occur during a long rest. That's generally when you're going to be using hit die and really the only time that it should apply. What this does mean is that you have to set this up in your actions tab. So I'm going to go through and drop this into place. And this is going to be a barred grouping. And it aligns fairly well with our bardic inspiration skill here. And what we want to do is set it up so that there's a heal component that we can give to our particular player or party members. We can do that by adding a new effect. And in this particular case, it will be called Song of Rest, semicolon, heal, colon, 1d6. And it will expire on the next roll, and it will be applicable to any targets that are in your party. And what this will allow you to do is, during a short rest, if someone indicates that they're going to be actually expending a hit die to regain some of their hit points back, all they will have to do is have this effect applied to them before they execute that hit die roll. And when they do that, they should gain this particular roll as part of that bonus, if you will. And it will be random per character. I like this concept because it adds a little bit of variety, if you will, to those heals because your song might have a greater impact to one particular character than it might to another, or your recital might have a greater impact to one character over another. So that sort of balances out the variances that that role per character is going to give rather than one role for the entire party. Now, this will increase at later levels. So at Level 9, you will be able to gain 1d8 hit points. At level 13, you will be able to give a 1d10 bonus to their hit point roll. And at level 17, that now becomes 1d12. So we'll have to be cognizant of this particular change as we move forward. Of course, you could just simply make a modification in advance to take that into account. So for here, for instance, you could say level 2 plus. And that would sort of indicate to you when you, this is in the combat and actions section that this would be what you would use when you're level two or higher. However, setting it up so that you use this particular role here at level nine kind of would replace this. So it's not so much that you're doing this level two or higher. You're essentially doing that from level two to level eight. And that would be sort of the text indication, if you will, that this would only be used between levels 2 through level 8. Now we could theoretically add a new effect, times 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to take this and copy this, so from there to there. And then simply make the modification so that this is level 9 to level 12 and this will be 1d8 and it will be on next roll this one will be levels 13 oops 13 to level 16 and it will be 1d10 oops 10 and it will be on next roll and then finally the last one will be from level 17 to level 20 and it will be a 1d12 and again on next roll so now you essentially have everything set up for those various levels and you don't need to worry about oh crap i forgot to set that up later on because it's an easy thing to forget 
but this is entirely up to you. If you don't want to preload all of these, if you will, you don't have to. I'm just showing you what you will need to do if you do decide to do that. And that completes everything that we need to do for Song of Rest. At level three, we will be gaining our Bardic College. This is where you get to choose one of the Bardic Colleges that will provide your character specialization. We will also be gaining a skill called Expertise, or a feature, I should say, called Expertise. We will not be gaining any proficiency bonuses. We will not be gaining any additional cantrips, but we will also be increasing the number of known spells. And because we are now level three, we've unlocked level two spell slots. So let's go ahead and apply this level. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to select Lore, but I will not be covering any of the features that Lore has given us. I will only be covering those features that are part of the base class throughout the course of this particular set of videos. I will, however, be recording other videos that will allow me to actually show you and explain those particular features. So before I get to the feature, I just want to go over our spell first. And the reason why is it's a nice, quick, simple thing to get out of the way. It's easy to forget, and you'll see several videos where I have forgotten it. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I take care of this now. Now, for the purposes of these videos, I'm not selecting spells with intent or thought. I'm just randomly choosing them simply because of the fact that it doesn't matter for the purposes of this particular demonstration. You as a player are going to have a set of spells you'd like if you've played characters that cast spells before, or you're going to look for a set of spells that best match your playstyle and the type of character you want to play. So it's always personal. And that's the reason why I don't necessarily go into a whole explanation of you should take this spell because there's no point. It's going to be personal to you. With the spell out of the way, we can now take a look at Expertise. With this feature, you are now able to choose two of your skill proficiencies and actually set it up as a double proficiency skill. Now, these are skills that you were already proficient in, not something like with the half proficiency thing here. So you should take a spell that you want to be double proficient in and then just left click it once. I'm going to go with Stealth and Acrobatics for the purpose of this particular character. And then make sure that you actually choose those and ensure they're double proficient. And what that does is it increases the bonus that you're gaining here. At the same time, when you hit level 10, you will also gain two more skills that you can actually go through and set up. So that's the reason why I'm not overly worried about the skills that I'm choosing here, except the Stealth skill and the Acrobatic skill are probably ones I'm going to use very early on. But that completes everything that we need to do when it comes to Expertise and Level 3. At Level 4, there are a couple of things that we are going to be gaining. The first is our ability score improvement, and I will go over the process of how that works. We're also gaining our first increase in our number of cantrips, and we are still gaining an increase in our spells known. So let's quickly apply the level. And then I'm going to take care of the cantrips and the known spells first. So cantrips, I have my illusion true strike. I'm going to go with mending. And then I'm going to choose another level 2 spell here. Go with Heat Metal. Now you'll see that I dropped that here, when in fact it actually dropped in here, which is good. It just means that it went into the group that I wanted it to. And that takes care of our spells and our cantrip. So let's take a look at the ability score improvement. The ability score improvement feature allows you to do one of two things guaranteed and potentially a third dependent entirely on the Dungeon Master themselves. The first of the two guaranteed things is that you can take a uh, ability point here, such as Strength, Dexterity, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, and increase one of those skills by two points. So I could theoretically take my Strength and take it from a 15 to a 17, for example. The second guaranteed option that you have available to you is to take two of those ability scores and increase each of them by one point. So theoretically, I could take my Charisma 
and my dexterity and increase each of those by one point and bring them to 18 as a total for each of them. And those ways are guaranteed by the rules. So you get to choose one of those methods. You cannot take your strength and increase it by two and then take your dexterity and con, for example, and increase each of those by one point. That's not how it works. It's an either or. However, there is also a third option and it's optional. It's an optional rule. And what this means is that if the dungeon master allows it, you will be able to take something called a feat and you gain access to feats during uh, character creation. So there's a button here called feats. This is a list of additional quote unquote features that you can add to your character. Some dungeon masters don't like them because in some cases they feel they might be a little bit overpowered. Alert, for example, might be a good example of that. Other DMs don't care and they will allow you to either do your ability score improvements or your feed increase, but you cannot do all of the things at the same time. You can either choose an ability score to increase by two points, two ability scores to increase by one point, or a feature. You can't have an ability score improvement and a feature, and you can't do the plus two ability score improvement uh, point increase at the same time that you take two skills and increase each by one or sorry abilities but i will do a feature at a later point in the leveling up tutorial here right now i'm going to make an adjustment to my constitution or sorry my constitution and the reason being is i'm hoping that i'm going to have an increase in our bonus here so i'm going to take this and increase it by two points and i did in fact get an increase in the bonus which allows me to introduce something else that you have to take care of when you increase your constitution and your modifier increases. And what that is, is that this character is now missing four hit points. I know it is missing four hit points because my constitution modifier went from a plus two to a plus three. That means that there is a difference of one point. My character is currently level four. If I take that one point and multiply it by the character level, which in this case is four, I get four for a total number of hit points that I am missing. I can now add those hit points to this particular character and bring my total hit points to 35 from 31. So whenever you do an attribute increase on your constitution that changes the modifier bonus you're gaining through that constitution, you do have the ability to add the missing hit points to your character. And you do this after you have completed your level because that's when you're actually gaining the ability score improvement. Now, anyone who plays within my campaigns will be cognizant of the fact that you should do this when you do a constitution point increase. And the reason being is that later on, say you're now three levels down the road, you forgot to do that. I have no way of knowing whether it was actually done or not. Of course, I really don't have an easy way to know whether it was done before or after, except for the fact that I back up the characters after each game. So that solves that problem. <laughs> In this particular case, you should do it always at the time that you've gained your ability score improvement and have made your constitution ability score modification that increases your actual mod value for that particular ability. This way you don't forget. But that finishes everything that we have to do for level four. So let's move on to level five. At level five, we are gaining our first proficiency point increase. We are also gaining an improvement to our bardic inspiration, and we're gaining a new feature called font of inspiration. We are not gaining any new cantrips, but we are gaining an increase in our known spells. Now, because we're going to level 5, there's a good chance that we are gaining access to level 3 spells, which we are. Excellent. So let's apply the level and get everything in place so that we can take a look at the Bardic Inspiration Increase and the Font of Magic Inspiration. So let's do Bardic Inspiration and Font of Inspiration. Set those aside for now, and I will take care of the spells known first. So because we have unlocked level three spells, I'm going to take care of oops, adding a level three spell to our list here. So let's see, I'm just gonna grab this. 
and that sets that up on our character. I'm just going to minimize all of these for now because I want to focus primarily on Font of Inspiration if we have to add it here and deal with our Bardic Increase here. Our Bardic Inspiration Increase, I mean. If you recall in the video where we created this particular character, we added this Bardic Inspiration modifier or ability, if you will, to our Actions tab. Well, we now have to make an adjustment to it because at 5th level, we now are able to use a D8 die as opposed to just simply a D6. So I'm going to quickly modify that by simply making this particular change in all three cases. Oops. That should be 8, not DD. And that's all we have to do. Now, I've kept this this way as a reminder that in some cases you might have to do the same thing here even though we've preloaded everything here for this we don't have to actually make that modification going forward i could have done the exact same thing here and that's literally all we have to do for bardic inspiration in relation to font of inspiration let's take a look at this so font of inspiration gives us the ability to actually change when we get bardic inspiration back so instead of it being a long rest as our required rest, we can now gain them back during a short or a long rest. So we can change this under preparation. We can change this part here to from daily to rest. And that will allow this particular uh, ability to be recovered regardless of which type of rest we now take. So if I burn through and make use of all of those abilities... I then go through and execute a short rest, we will see that it now comes back. Excellent. This is what we want to do. And I have no idea why, but I just put my thumb up. <laughs> and that, in fact, takes care of everything that we actually have to do for level 5. But I'm going to point out the fact that our proficiency bonus score has, in fact, increased. So you will see here that our proficiency score has increased. Any saving throw that we're proficient in will have also increased. So if you look at it a little bit earlier before I applied this level, this would have been plus 5, and now it's plus 6. Additionally, all of our skills, with the exception of the ones that are half proficient in, will have also increased by 1 point. And the reason why I'm saying that these ones will not have increased is because 3 divided by 2 rounding down is still 1. So we're not going to see an increase in those particular stats in anything that is half proficient. We're only going to see the increase in our proficient or double proficient skills. Finally, our ability to attack has also increased because we have now gained a plus one point. This used to be plus five for our attack bonus. Now it is plus six. So that confirms everything that we have to worry about around our proficiency bonus has been handled for us. We don't need to do anything else. At level 6, we are seeing a new feature called Counter Charm come into play. We are also gaining a Bardic College feature, which will not be covered in this particular video. And we are increasing our known spells. So, let's go ahead and apply the level. That is now level 6. I'm simply going to take care of the spell first. So that's level 3. And let's do Major Image just for kicks. I've never actually used that spell. The Counter Charm feature gives you the ability to potentially disrupt mind-influencing effects. That's mainly charm and frightening effects. And what you will do is instead of taking a combat action, you would begin a performance that lasts until the end of your next turn. During that time, any character who has to make a charm or frightened saving throw, or a saving throw that would potentially resist those, We'll do so with advantage. This means we need to add this to our actions tab. Let's go ahead and pop this into place and then add this to the bar group. I don't know why this keeps adding the <laughs> frightened effect there. It's not that you want to be frightened, it's that you're trying to resist the frightened aspect of it. So I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to add a new effect and set this here. 
So the goal here is going to be giving the player an advantage roll on a saving throw they make against Frightened or Charmed. Well, there's no direct Frightened or Charmed effect that we could potentially throw a resistance to to be able to automatically grant advantage on a saving throw just to those particular saving throws. Additionally, the game isn't necessarily going to know whether someone has to make a Wisdom or Intelligence or Charisma uh, saving throw in order to actually determine if they're going to be Frightened or Charmed. So the easiest way to do this is simply to create a basic ability, or effect rather, where we're going to simply provide a ADV SAV. And it can go on a target, and all you have to do is set it up so that it has one round on their next roll. And that should work for what we want. And what this will do is it will give someone an advantage to their saving throw at the time that the effect is applied so that whenever they have to make that particular roll, they can do so. But you're only going to want to actually give them that effect at the time that they're making the advantage roll, or rather the actual saving throw, I should say simply because of the fact that it may be a dexterity saving throw to resist a fireball. You don't want to grant them advantage to that. That's sort of what it is, the, the, the scenario that you want to kind of avoid. And when you use the ADV SAV tag, your limits or options, I should say, really are to your ability score, such as strength, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, etc., etc. So by defining no tag there, we're able to avoid a selection or narrowing, if you will, of the actual saving throw that they will have to apply that to. That's sort of the, the, the pain point of this particular kind of effect. But that goes through and sets everything up that we need to do for this particular counter charms feature. I just want to point out, though, that they have to be within 30 feet of you and can hear you, and you cannot be incapacitated have been magically silenced or silenced in any way, shape, or form, or you choose to voluntarily end the song, if you will. So let's say combat's over. Well, you don't really need to continue going for the remaining portion of your next turn. You can finish right there if you wish. In relation to level 7, there's really not much we're gaining here, with the exception of unlocking 4th level spells and an increase in the number of spells we now know, so right here. So let's go ahead and apply this level. And because this is such a very easy adjustment here, all I'm going to do is add a fourth level spell to our character sheet. There we go. Oops. Now, in case you didn't catch that, this got added to the bard grouping. That is actually incorrect. We don't want that there. So I'm going to remove that. And you got to be careful when you do that. You want to make sure that you drag it over a quote-unquote spell group, not a quote-unquote power group, which is what this bard group is. And that just simplifies the whole process of making sure that your spells go where you want them to. Now, once again, this particular spell has dropped into the spell's bard group. So what I'm going to do just to keep things <laughs> simple for us is I'm going to drag the rest of these up here. So fairy fire should... Now be here. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to remove that from here. And that will get rid of that spell group. And I'm now going to take Deep Thoughts and drag it up to here. Um, get rid of, or sorry, Detect th Thoughts, not Deep Thoughts. <laughs> um, drag this up to here. Get rid of Heat Metal. And then finally deal with the one level 3 spell that we have. Oops, and make sure it gets dragged up. And that way, I don't necessarily have to deal with so many different groups for the spells. They're all, and I can get rid of this. Oops. There. They're now all under here, and that'll keep everything's uniform. It's an option if you do it. It just I'm just doing this to show you how a little bit cleaner it looks if they're all under the same group. But that was essentially level 7. There isn't anything else that we need to do. And with that, I'm actually going to finish this video here. We're at approximately 30 minutes of recording. 
So I suspect I'll probably trim this down to about a 30 minute or so video. And what I will do is I will pick up levels 8 through as many levels as I can in the next video, hopefully getting all the way through to level 20. It depends on how complicated some of those abilities are going to be when we actually go through and set them up and add them to our combat sheets. So I hope you found this particular video informative and I look forward to seeing you in the next part. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.